Hey, what's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and how many of you have ever found yourself in a situation where you build your brand new computer and you've got that nice high-speed RAM, 2600 megahertz, 2800 megahertz, or even something like a 2133 megahertz RAM, and you boot it up and you go into BIOS or you go into Windows and you take a look at your RAM speed and you see that disappointing 1333 megahertz. Well, today we're gonna find out how to make your RAM actually run at its advertised speeds. That's right guys, today we're gonna to talk about memory speed and how to get that advertised speed out of your dim sticks, uh, in, whether you're in an Intel or an AMD system. Now first things first, you have to understand how the memory controllers actually work to understand what we're about to do today. Now first of all, the memory speeds that you see advertised on most modules are actually called an XMP profile, which in itself is an overclock of the internal memory controller or the IMC inside of your CPU. That is why your system actually boots at a default 1333 because that is the default speed. So in essence, you're pretty much doing an overclock of your memory controller to get the speeds that you're being advertised on your DIMMs. The DIMM just says that it's actually been tested up to that speed and has been stable in an XMB profile at those timings and those speeds. But there's no guarantee that you're actually gonna get that kind of speed. So going into this, there's two things you have to understand. One, those speeds are an overclock of the IMC. It doesn't mean your CPU is gonna technically be able to run those speeds, Chances are it'll work, but there's no guarantees. And number two being the more you overclock your CPU, the less likely you are to be able to achieve those super fast memory speeds as it adds a lot of strain on the IMC when you start overclocking both at the same time. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into my MSI Empower. Uh, we'll take a look here at exactly how to change uh, those memory speeds for you. Now, keep in mind, Every motherboard is different. Every UEFI is different. Every BIOS is different. So you're going to have to consult your manual to find the settings that I'm looking at here today on my MSI Empower. Now in most systems to get into BIOS, all you have to do is just kind of mash the delete key as you're going through your boot process here. And uh, it says right there, press delete to run BIOS. And here we are. Now we're running all of the default settings right here. As you can see, we've actually got 3.5 gigahertz on my 4770K. And if we go here into the OC, and that's where you're gonna find your memory speeds because as I mentioned, it's actually an overclock to get faster RAM speed, even the advertised XMP. You're gonna go down to the OC tab or wherever the memory controller uh, settings are located on your BIOS. Remember, please look up your manuals and you're gonna head on over here to the right and you're gonna find wherever your DRAM settings are. So here we are. Here's our DRAM settings. DRAM reference clock is auto, DRAM frequency is auto, adjusted RAM frequency. 1333, there it is right there. An extreme memory profile, XMP, is disabled. Now, if I wanna get the advertised 1600 megahertz, that's actually the uh, default RAM speed of the A data RAM I have in here, I could simply go enabled, and as you can see, we switched to 1600 megahertz right there. So now what we'll do, oh, and here's the voltage and the timing. So it's a 99924 timing at 1.5 volts, which is the default. And then you've pretty much got everything right there. Now you've got mem try it, which is kind of a built-in memory overclocking profile for MSI. We're gonna kind of ignore that. And what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna go ahead and reboot into our, uh, we're gonna reboot the BIOS system. We're gonna go back in and make sure those systems actually took effect. Okay, so we've rebooted our system. And as you can see now, we do actually have the 1600 megahertz RAM uh, showing now in the system, which means it would also show in Windows. We are running our XMP profile, which means the optimal timings and the optimum frequency of your RAM. But you don't have to stop there. You could technically overclock this farther. We're gonna go to DRAM frequency. And as you can see, we've got, this motherboard supports up to 3,200 megahertz of DDR3. But we can just kind of go up in increments at a time, run some stress tests and find our maximum. I found that DDR3 uh, on this A data sticks, these 1600 megahertz sticks actually run stable at 2133. So I could set that, reboot it. We'll see if we even get into BIOS. And if we do, then you can do a uh, mem test and then uh, test your memory stability from there and you're good to go. So as you can see, we just now booted into 2133 megahertz RAM at stock, uh, stock voltage right now. In fact, it would probably fail the mem test I've got to bump up the voltage on my RAM a little bit too, but that kind of goes into a much more in-depth uh, memory overclocking uh, tutorial, which hopefully we'll do at a later time. But one thing you need to keep in mind though, as you start bumping up the memory or the CPU overclock, for instance, this CPU only likes to run at 4.4, we are then able to 
We would want to actually adjust our memory speeds independent. Find your stable CPU speed, then find your stable memory speed, and then go from there. So overclock your CPU first, leave it at default 1333, and then overclock your RAM independently once you find your stable overclock on your CPU. Once your RAM becomes unstable or you start getting blue screens, then you're gonna to wanna to back off the RAM slightly, probably one setting on your uh, speed setting or your speed list there. And then there you go. So guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. I hope this has helped you understand why your memory is booting at a much slower speed than the memory that you bought. So don't get mad. Don't think that your memory sticks are bad. Just go ahead and go into your BIOS and start tinkering. You really can't do much damage unless you start cranking the voltages up way too high. And as long as you leave the voltages alone, play around with it all you want. If it doesn't work, clear your CMOS and start over. Guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. Take the time to go in there and mess with your settings because there's a lot of free power in there that you guys may be missing out on for the sake of just being afraid to click some buttons. Don't be afraid to get in there and tinker, guys. That's, that's the moral of this video. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about today. Get in there and mess with your junk and play with your BIOS as well. Guys, I'm going to get on out of here. It's been Jason Sense. Follow on Twitter, and I hope to see you in the next one.